Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how to paint some wood grain. Let's get into it right now. Okay, so what I've done here is just on a regular sheet of A4 copy paper, I've just sketched out a bit of the uh, wood pattern. I use this as a reference. So just jump on uh, Google and search for uh, wood grain and you'll find all different um, sort of examples of that. Now I'm just gonna freehand some more of that sort of pattern going in here. So obviously it doesn't look like much at the moment. It will become a nice little template. What I am going to do is I'm going to use my blade and just cut along that line. And I'm going to stop about there just over say a centimetre from the edge. Don't worry if you're not following the line perfectly, this doesn't have to be exact. And again, you can use any particular wood grain effect that you find. You do not have to copy this 100%. Now by stopping shy of that edge, these aren't gonna fall out on me. So now I've got a template that I can maneuver between each individual pattern which is handy because I could use the positive or the negative and then I'll do a similar thing with this one here with the knot so as far as the knots concerned well that one can drop out so I can go right around with that one okay so that one's going to fall out whereas these other ones I'll do the same I'll stop shy from the edge and then that'll become a multi-use mask there are also templates available, freehand templates that you can purchase and then they're reusable obviously. But for wood grain this is pretty simple to do yourself and I thought it would be handier showing you something that you can just copy at home rather than having to order a, a template. You can just follow along with this and get a similar sort of effect. And again you can see it's a cool little template that we can utilize. And with this one, I'll go around this edge like so and stop there so that that center section is still attached like so. And I can even cut out the center part of that knot so that I know that that is going to spray nice and sharp. Okay, so I'm using a synthetic paper for this artwork, just masking it up, using those magnets just to hold it into place. That way I'll have a nice clean border Okay, so the first thing I want to do is use some flesh tone. I'm going to put that into my Iwata Eclipse. I'm just going to spray a base color over the entire surface of the synthetic paper. So you can use any sort of flesh tone color if you're unsure of how to mix this up, then I'll link to a video in the description showing you how to do that. It's very easy just using some primary colors. So I'm going to try and get a reasonably even coverage but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect because we are going for wood grain so there's going to be lots of imperfections in it regardless. You don't want to oversaturate the synthetic paper because obviously it has that coating on it. So if you go too heavy, it, um, it could spider out on you. And I don't know if you can see that, but it is sort of beading a little bit on the surface. So I'm not too concerned about it, but you don't want to go much heavier than that. So to assist with drying, you can use your airbrush. Just keep the air on and let the air dry the surface. Or you can go get yourself a hairdryer or a heat gun, but make sure you keep it moving so that you don't um, damage the surface that you're working on. Okay, so I've just uh, put a bit of sepia in this cup and added some water to it just to break it down and make it a lot thinner than normal. And I'm coming in with just an old house painting brush. So you want something like this that's nice and wide, dried up bristles, and I'll show you why in a second. So dipping the brush into the sepia, just got a plain bit of paper here. I'm just going to drag that across and you can see how I'm starting to get these lines. That's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead now and with the brush, I'm just going to drag it across our page like so. And this is going to give me the grain that I'm looking for. 
Now those magnets are kind of a little bit in the way, but that's all right. Come in here and just fix those up. Try not to go down on an angle like so. We can uh, hide that later. But you sort of want to just drag it to get a nice flowing line. Okay, so now I just want to shift the color. So I'm going to use some true brown. This is a ready brown. This will work perfect just to add a nice tone to it. I'll just dust over it. You can leave some lighter sections if you like. Go a bit heavier in spots, whatever you feel looks effective. Again, just using that, my reference as a guide, I'm not trying to copy it 100%. And this is more of, meant to be more of an effect. Okay, so now we've got that reddish brown. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now and add in some burnt umber. And this is a nice transparent color which can tone over my existing reddish brown. So working that color in just to give everything a nice tone. Okay, starting to look a bit more like timber now. Okay, so what I want to do now, going back to my original flesh, it's going to drip a bit of that on here and grabbing the brush. Now I've totally cleaned this out and dried it. I just want to get some of that on the edges of the bristles. And this time I want this to be like dry brushing and I'm going to drag that across. What I'll do this time to make sure that I can get right across the surface is I'll move the magnets down and then using my brush, just lightly drag that over. And then we're gonna get some of those highlighted scratches in there. Getting a little bit more on the brush. Move these up the top so we can hit that bottom area. Again, dragging it right across. Back the other way. Okay, so now we've lightened up the timber a bit. Before I start using some of the paper templates and adding more detail, I'm gonna go back to my burnt umber. I'm just gonna lightly dust over it just to tint some of these highlights. You don't need much. You should just knock them back a little bit. So coming in with the paper templates now, just lay them into place and you can see I've got plenty of room there. That's where my masking tape is. By trimming that template, it's still allowing me to get that complete shape in there. I'm gonna use my True Brown, so that's this one here. I'm gonna spray around the edge. Actually a good idea to put some magnets down so I hold it into place. And then I'll follow up with, this is a uh, sepia mixed with black. I just wanna hit some of these edges. I'm not going to go right along. And just have a quick look, see what that looks like first before we continue on with the others. I can just flip that, lift that up. That's got a pretty cool look. Pretty happy with that so far. So moving right along, I'll lay this one back down now and I'll lift up the next one. So super easy to do. Come in with the true brown first. Hit that edge. So you can go a bit heavier with the true brown, obviously. And I am going right around that edge. Keep the air press down, just pulling back and moving with the airbrush is very important. You don't want to get sort of a heavy spot. And now with our sepia black mix, same again. Hit the edge. Now mask that one up and remove that final center part. Repeat the process and we'll have a look at it. 
Okay, go ahead now and we'll do that top section. Lay that into place where you're happy with it. Grab some of these magnets again. Now, obviously, if you're going to use this down here, you'd want to mask that off. Otherwise, you would get a uh, sharp edge. But this is going to just uh, overspray onto the masking tape, so I'm safe there. So just keep that in mind. Let's do this one a little bit different. We'll start with the knot first. I'm going to go ahead and spray that in. Little bit of freehand. That center section. Okay. Okay, so we can go around this edge as well. Bite it out a little bit there. Too heavy. Now I'm going a little bit heavier than before on this section because it is the knot. So I want that to be darker. And just grab my little positive mask. I'll modify that in a minute. I'm just gonna spray in that solid crack in the knot. You can see that there. By having that as a defined edge, makes it look a lot better. And now I'm gonna use this part. I'll curl this part up and use that as a positive like so. And I can just line that back up and spray around. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but spray around there to get that sharper outside edge. And a bit of freehand as well. If you're not confident with freehand, then just cut some more masks. But if you've watched my videos before, you know that I like to mix it up. A bit of masking as well as freehand always looks better, I think. A little bit of freehand texturing. Okay, on to the next one. Continuing on, that brown first. Again, magnet to hold into place. So if this is the first time watching one of our videos, then welcome for all of our regular viewers, welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this video tutorial so far. If you are, then give it the thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing, tap on that bell icon, and that'll notify you every time I put out new content. Take a look. I'm going to come in and freehand. Some more grain. So you could also cut templates. I thought this part I'll show you. Some freehand stuff. Basically all I'm doing is continuing that grain. So we've got that repetitive pattern going on. So I'm using this color first just to sketch that in. And then I'll further define it. Also continue with this one. I'll just shade down from these before I come in with that sepia and black mix. So you can take parts of this obviously and develop your own wood grain style. You don't have to go as detailed as this, totally up to you. Coming in freehand.
we'll come in and work over the top of some of these as well just I feel they need to be a little bit darker again you could reline up your template and I'm going to accentuate some of these darker timber lines in here as well You can see how using that mask as well as freehand, how you get that nice balance. Same thing, some more definition in here. Clean up any of these bits that where some of the uh, paint was removed. It's a benefit with synthetic paper, you can also erase on it. But if you move on to the next part of the masking too quickly, then you can sometimes remove a bit of the paint, which is what happened there. And now I can freehand and darken off a couple of bits as well. Here is the completed wood grain artwork. Let's get a closer look. You can see the knot, all the detailing in there. All the shading. Now this synthetic paper is about A4 size. So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.